How's it everybody? And welcome back to my channel. I know I've been away for a very long time and I haven't posted any videos recently, actually any videos for the last few months. And I'm pretty sure the last time that I did a video was before this whole COVID thing. So the reason that I've been away for so long is because we dived headfirst back into the documentary, which was at the time called Disunity, and it's now called The Last Horns of Africa. So for those of you who aren't aware of the documentary I've been working on, it's a rhino poaching film that dives headfirst into all of the issues that face the rhinos and the people on the front lines trying to protect them. And it's also almost done. We've gone into picture lock, so that's all completed. And the post sound is almost done. It's pretty awesome. They're doing a 5.1 mix. And our composer has also completed all of his songs for the film. And pretty much all that's left is for me to color grade the film. And luckily, my partner Morgan was able to contact Azo, who sent us a color grading monitor called the CG319X. And this is a reference monitor that I can actually see what's going on when doing the color grading. Because what we found was anything that we tried to do on the iMac or any other screen, it just didn't look quite right when we looked at it on, let's say, a cinema screen or anywhere else that we viewed it. So we really needed something that could give us an actual reference to what we're seeing. And I, that's also another really important thing is that you are seeing your images while you're grading them for what they really are and how they're supposed to look. And this is the same for audio. The sound guys were doing massive mixes in 5.1 in a sound environment with the correct speakers so they could actually hear what was really happening. And this is where what we recorded in South Africa over at Kruger Park and at Care for Wild, the Atmos that we had done, came in so handy because the sound team was able to enrich the film and make it so much better. So on The Last Horns of Africa, Glenn Martin did our sound design and he replaced a lot of things like footsteps and clothes rustling. But he didn't do this throughout the film. He picked certain moments that needed sound when there wasn't music and focused more on those because we still wanted it to feel like a documentary. It still needed to have that element of reality. So what he ended up doing was using what they call spot effects. He picked moments that needed to stand out and added effects to those and used the Atmos that we recorded to create a bed for these sounds to live in. And this is something I want to try and show you today is how to create these layers of sound that can really enrich and bring your images to life and really take your audience and put them in the film with you. So my main focus is cinematography and camera work. I'm by no stretch a professional sound recordist, but I was able to capture what the sound designer and mixer needed to create the world that they did for our film. And this is what I want to instill in you is that you need to know the craft. You need to know how to record audio, even if it's not gonna be your main job. If you do fall into those situations where you have to record, make sure you know how to do it properly. This won't only make your job easier, whether it's YouTube videos or feature films, it'll make the people you work with respect you even more because you understand what they have to do and you understand what it is that they have to go through to get what they need to provide really good audio for you and your project. So 
So I just want to show you guys some of the gear that I use to record my Foley and my Atmos. The recorder that I've been using since the start of the documentary is the Zoom H6. It's a four channel field recorder with gain control. It's got phantom power so you can use any mic you need to. It's pretty versatile, it gives you really good quality audio. So with the Zoom H6 comes a stereo attachment for the top. Works really well for capturing that little bit of ambience that you need that can have that stereo effect. Feels like you're there. And for Foley I use the NTG2 because it's a directional mic and it can focus in on a specific sound. I know it's not the most extensive complex gear that there is out there for recording Foley and Atmos, but for now this stuff works for me and getting the results that I need for some of my YouTube content as well as what I used in the documentary. So what I want to show you guys now is how to actually do the recordings for a short scene that I created in a camping trip that I went on with my partner. And uh, I'm going to break down everything and show you exactly how it works. I think this might work. This is a lot bigger. It's got a much bigger sound to it. And that's sort of what you want to do is, is have what's on screen sound a little bigger than it actually is. And then you can always bring the gain down to adjust. Alright, so I am bringing up the project window here and what I've done is I've already laid out the tracks and I've already created the uh, little video with the sound effects. So what I'm basically going to do is break down what you're seeing on screen. And um, I think the best way to approach this particular scene was to um, have a look at the Atmos first, just to get a sense of what the place sounds like. And this is essentially what I'd recorded on the day. There was two elements, one of them being the general ambience from the location, which was a campsite. And then there was a very, very nearby stream, which I also went and recorded. And this is what they sound like. So you can just notice that they, um, they really do capture the, the sound of that location. You can hear birds and the buzz of nature and, and it's, it's really rich and it's really beautiful. And this is what's gonna be taking up the backdrop of the scene. So the next element that I'm going to show you now, which we'll focus on first, um, which I think is by far the most complex one, is the uh, teapot. So I'm just going to solo all of these tracks so you can hear exactly what's going on. And um, basically what I did was record separate elements. And the purpose of recording all these individual sounds is so that you have control over their volume. You want to have complete control over all the elements within the scene. So the first one I'm going to show you. So that little element there is the sound that I made with the straw in the water, the bubbles. And this is the water boiling up out of the pot. And you'll notice that on the tail end of this, there is an extra little bubble that I added just to uh, give it a sense of uh, its completing. One last little final hurrah for the boiling water. So on the next layer down, what I've placed is the little cap of the teapot rattling. And 
And then one layer down from that, which is an added layer onto this element, is the tin that I used as another rattling lid, just to give it a bit more depth. And you can hear that's the one, and then with the other, it becomes quite rich. And then on the next layer down, I've layered three layers of different sounds of water hitting a heated metal surface. And this is when I flicked water onto the stove top and recorded it. This is so that you can see the water splattering out and I'll solo these tracks and you can have a listen. Yeah, so as you can see, this is the sound that I feel the, the pot was making on the day um, when the water was hitting the metal, the heated metal surface from the Bunsen burner. And um, I think this gives a really nice uh, little bit of reality to it. So it's all about the timing. What I did was break these elements into uh, small chunks. So you can see on this first little layer here, it's just one little bit of a splash. And the next one's also very, very small chunks. And then there's another one just above this. And then one more just here. So basically what I was trying to do was watch the teapot and watch the different moments that water would splash out and then try and time the small recordings that I had and break them into manageable chunks so that there's layer upon layer upon layer of sound as opposed to just trying to use the exact recording as it was done. I think the layering will um, really create a lot of depth to your shot. And now you can hear all of them combined. And the same here with the uh, teapot, another bit of sound that I used was the teapot being lifted up off of another metal surface. Now this is a simple, simple recording. I took the original metal teapot and put it in a metal container and then lifted it off quite roughly, many, many different ways and used two separate audios to make the sound of this teapot lifting off. There it is. It seems to work quite well. And then one final layer for the teapot sound is the pouring. And I purposefully made the pouring too short to show that you can take two pouring moments and combine them into one longer pour. So together, all these sounds make up the teapot. Now let's move on to the background. Now the background becomes the foreground. As Morgan steps up and moves closer towards the teapot, she starts to move and her clothes start to rustle. So I took the jacket as well as the tea cloth and moved them around in time with the screen. As I watched the performance happening, I was moving the cloth, recording what I thought would sync up really, really nicely. And again, I ended up cutting it up and layered it into different moments so that I could have more control over what was being heard. So here's the first layer. And the second layer is when the cloth takes over, the tea cloth. And the final layer is the hand gripping the cloth. I can, you can hear some slight cloth scrunching moments. That was pretty simple. As you can see on screen, it was quite easy to record it and time it and then just place it in. 
And having all these elements separated like this means that, let's say for instance you wanted to make the rattling teapot sound louder or the splashing water onto the metal surface louder, you have control of every single individual moment of this scene and you have control over the entire thing. And this is essentially what you want to do. You want to have complete control over your soundscape so that you can raise and lower things independently. Uh, this is another element which I added in. So just a gas Bunsen burner burning. But what you do notice here is you have a sound that slowly enters the uh, screen, gets really loud. And then at the end of the shot, there's a change of perspective. The burn is further away. So you're going to want to take the levels on this teapot down so it gives that perspective change from close up to further away. And then all of a sudden we're back at the teapot. It's quite intense again and it's very loud. And then there's the sound of the burner being switched off. And then finally, before the shot started, I added a small amount of flapping cloth to the tent in the background there. And one small bit of cloth movement here when her hand moved to touch the cell phone. Just small tiny details that make a world of difference when you hear them all together. Now once you hear all these sound effects without the Atmos in the back, it might sound a little strange. Now let's watch the video again with every single element added. The Atmos, the Foley, all the sound effects, everything being turned on at once, the way you meant to hear it. So something I want you to try on your next video is to not jump straight to music first. Try and create your cut and then put in all the audio that you need to make it as rich as possible and then watch back and see where music is necessary. What you'll often find is that music sometimes isn't necessary at all or in only small moments. Sound has got so much power and it can be really complementary with music. But sometimes sound itself has enough power to take you through a scene without adding any music at all. So just do it as a bit of an experiment. Try and cut something together, it doesn't matter what it is, how long it is, and try and add as much vibrant, rich sound as you can, and then see if you need any music at all.
I find myself watching through my edits and sometimes thinking that music can be a band-aid to something that's not right. Music has a way of correcting cuts and making things seem better than they are. You really see a scene for what it is when there's no music at all. You can see all of its warts when you take the music off and have only the sound. And then you can see if something works or not. And then add music as the background layer to emphasize and enhance what's already there. Don't use music as a crutch. So something really important that I learned while doing The Last Horns of Africa, and I wish I had learned it earlier on, is that when you're on set or when you're shooting your projects, whether it's documentaries or YouTube videos or features, make sure that on the day that you're there, record audio as much as possible, whether it's Atmos or Foley. There's a lot of circumstances where you're not gonna be able to go back and recreate those moments that you're in. And you're not gonna be able to get the same Atmos from that day. The weather was a certain way, the birds chirping off in the distance were a certain sound. So try and record as much as you can while you're shooting or just after you've shot, but make sure it's that same day. You wanna record what you're doing that day so that you have it. Otherwise you need to go back and try and recreate what you had already. And it's really difficult to, to get that same magic that you had on the day while you were filming. It's sometimes really hard to remember all these different things while you're doing a one-man project, whether it's doing the camera, the lighting, the interviewing, all these different elements that have to come together. But once you make it a habit, you're gonna do it on every project. So something small that I do at the end of every interview now is to record the room tone. It's just a little element that you can have. So when you're cutting an interview up, when you cut between speaking, you have the sound that is naturally behind the person and it doesn't sound weird to go to absolute silence. These are little tricks and techniques that you pick up over time. They're really important and they could really save you a lot of time when you're doing your edits. So in the link below, I'm gonna add some downloadable files, some Atmos, some Foley and some shots that you can put together in your own sequence and see how the sound really is with pictures. These are all high quality images and high quality recordings ready for you to dive straight into and put together and see what it's like. So what I really want you to take away from all of this is that don't think of sound as something of an afterthought. Think of it as something that is so important to your video, so important to your films, and so important to each moment in your film that it's not an afterthought. It's not something that you should just brush off. Sound really is an essential part of every film. Do yourself a favor and go and watch your favorite movie and just pay attention to how many sounds are in that film. If you take away what music has been put there and just listen to the sound, it's incredible how many sounds have been added in. A film is layer upon layer of different things from vision to acting to sound to music to all these different elements that have to come together to make a story. So don't take sound and think it's not important. It's incredibly important. And make sure that you go and experiment and you test as much as you can to see if you can get the same results. Thanks for watching, guys. See you on the next one.